Dear friend, Namaste and this is Ramnik Wake from Bangkok City, Thailand. Friends, today I'm here for a workshop on the miracles of pranayama and food therapy. And right now I'm standing beside this very favorite uh, Pante Plaza called Electronic Mall over here. This is a beautiful city to visit and I'm here for a workshop on the miracles of pranayama and food therapy. Now friends, today here I shall be telling you about the guidelines to be kept in mind while practicing pranayama. Friend, the first important guideline is to have complete faith in your practice. That means no matter what people tell you, you got to have complete faith in your practice. The second important guideline is regularity of practice. Now in all my books, friends, I do write a simple statement which says, uh, skipping a day amounts to skipping a week. That means there is no room for skipping your practice as far as pranayama is concerned. If you skip one day of your practice whatsoever you earn to last one week as far as your health status is concerned, that is gone. So you've got no room for skipping your practice. Number third, I would tell you to divide your practice into two equal sessions, session one and session two. Session one means anytime you get up in the morning and before you have your afternoon lunch, you should complete your session one. Session two means that once you've completed your lunch and before you retire to bed at night, in between that, anytime you can do your session two. Next important thing is that whatever time you allot to session one, you got to allot the same time to session two. That means whatever pranayama you're doing in your session one, the same ones you got to do in your session two. Third important thing, friends, here is that you've got to be doing the pranayamas which are related to the disease you're suffering from. That means you should be doing your disease specific pranayamas. Now friends, let me share with you an important thing here. That if four people come to me, one with cancer, one with diabetes, one with hypertension and the fourth with asthma, and if I tell each one of them five pranayamas to do, there might not be even one pranayama which is similar. So that means, friends, it is very important for you to do the pranayamas related to the disease you're suffering from. Next important thing, friends, here is that pranayama is a complete science of ratios and it is based on four pillars, inhalation, internal retention, exhalation, and external retention. And the fixed ratio between these four pillars is 1 is to 4 is to 2 is to 4 so it is very important for you to follow the ratios because if you do not follow the ratios you will not get any results. Next important thing friend here is regarding the bandhas. Now pranayama has pressure locks in it. Remember the pressure locks or the bandhas are very important while practicing pranayama. So remember a simple rule that whenever you're doing a pranayama which involves internal retention of breath you should always apply Jalandarban and when you're doing a pranayama which involves external retention of breath you should apply all the three bandha Jalandarban, Uriyanban and Moolban. Next important thing friend here is regarding the meal gaps. Now what I would tell you is that you should have a gap of one hour between pranayama and the meal. That means after you've had your meal wait for one hour before you do your pranayama. Next important thing is regarding the clothing. Friends, you can wear any clothes in which you are comfortable with for doing your pranayama. Next important thing is the asana. Now friend, let me tell you that asanas will not make a difference as far as pranayama is concerned. And even as our Hindu definition, the Sanskrit definition of asana, that is Thir Sukham Asana, meaning whatever position you can sit comfortably for a reasonable length of time, that is your asana. So friends, you can sit in any posture while you're practicing pranayama. You need not sit cross-legged or in Padmasana. You can sit in any posture. But remember one thing, do not lie down while you're doing your pranayama. Because when you're lying down, proper use of the diaphragm is not possible. So do not lie down while you're doing your pranayama. Next thing is regarding the place. Now friends, I would recommend you to do pranayama either outdoor or indoor. It will make no difference at all. The only thing is that if you're doing your pranayama indoors, remember that 
there is no gas stove or any heating appliance on in that room because when you have heating appliances on they sap away the oxygen from the room so remember not to have any heater blower or any kind of heating appliance on in that room next important thing friends i'll tell you to maintain a pranayama diary for yourself where you should write down that how many minutes of practice you've done in the morning and how many minutes in the evening that would be very important and the last important thing is regarding your diet as far as pranayama is concerned so friends remember food therapy holds a very important uh, role in healing and i would recommend you to have more and more of natural food products like nuts seeds legumes lentils fresh fruit salad sprout they would be good for your health try to avoid eating trans fats processed food stuffs try to avoid eating saturated fats they are bad for your health another important thing friends remember to take in at least 4 to 5 liters of water every day that would help you a lot water helps to release the toxins out of our system and that is very good for our health friends now let me tell you here that i conduct these five courses and all these five courses are conducted by me personally at my centers at gk1 and gk2 new delhi and they are also conducted over the skype internet so friends if you are interested in taking any of these courses you can directly get in touch with me my personal cell number is +919910178140 Let me tell you about these courses now. The first course is called Disease Specific Course on Pranayama and Food Therapy, and this has got 11 classes. The second is Basic Course on Pranayama and Food Therapy, and that has got nine classes. The third is Advanced Course on Pranayama and Food Therapy, which has got nine classes. The fourth is the Basic Course on Meditation, which has got six classes, and the fifth is the Teachers Training Course on Pranayama, Food Therapy, and Meditation, and that has got thirty. classes so friends all these courses are conducted by, by me personally at my centers at gk1 gk2 new delhi and also over the skype uh, id there all these courses are also conducted over the skype my skype id is yoga guru ramnik wake now friends let me tell you that i have over 500 videos on youtube so you can also check them out my youtube address is youtube.com/yogagururamnik wake And friends, my Facebook page address is facebook.com/the miracles of pranayama and food therapy, and my website is www.ramnikwig.com. I'll spell it out for you. It's www.ramnikwig.com. And again, I'll tell you my personal cell number. This is plus nine one nine nine one zero one seven eight one four zero. My email is yoga enjoyment at gmail.com. And friends, let me tell you that I myself suffered from cancer three times. The third time I got cancer, the cure rate was not even one percent. But pranayama and food therapy helped me to get a new life, and now I'm totally cancer-free. It's been over 11 years, and I'm totally cancer-free. And friends, let me tell you here that pranayama and food therapy is helpful in the treatment of several ailments like cancer, diabetes, asthma, high blood pressure, cardiovascular diseases, Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, liver disorders, kidney disorders, bipolar disorders, depression, obesity, and several others. Pranayama is the best stress buster. Practice pranayama and food therapy, and you can heal yourself of anything. Namaste, friends. So this is Ramnik Wake signing off from Bangkok City.